this conversation today um, is very exciting and we have four very other uh, competent uh, panelists with me, um, Azania, Comrade Goba, Comrade Mastol and Comrade Tobani, who themselves were very big players in the fees must fall, rose must fall moment. We're discussing blacks can't be racist and we're asking the question, this, did this text, 20, I mean, 10 years ago when it came, um, first was printed in the year 2009, discussed widely in society, did some of its uh, ideas uh, find their way into the movement that uh, happened in the year 2020, uh, 2015. Now, I will go through some of the um, actual interactions that happened uh, at the beginning. Up to the year uh, 2012, at least, there was very active uh, uh, discussions that are happening on this text. Uh, uh, blacks can be racist. And these conversations were happening specifically in, in two areas, mostly at University of, uh, of Cape Town and also at Vits. And I'm arguing that when I look back at the movement, Roads Must Fall, the first moment, and the arguments made in the essay, there is interesting commonalities, there is interesting uh, parallels which suggests that either the actors <coughs> were aware of the arguments of the essay, or if not, um, there was a big coincidence. I feel like this coincidence is a bit too much of a coincidence that uh, the actors themselves would not have been aware of the, particularly these arguments that, 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 that the essay makes. In my more charitable moments, I'm arguing that, you know, I feel like Al Tuze, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> that's more charitable, charitable moments. I feel like Al Tuze, who we know, you know, is a big uh, influence intellectually of the 1968 French student worker uprising. However, the, the movement itself rejects Al Tuze, right? I had felt many moments, of course, during this time that, I myself have been rejected by, by the movement. And I think for particular reasons, and, and for the same reasons that the, the people, um, the people that uh, were, were in the initial moment of our interactions uh, with, with this text, had were the fallout. In other words, we were the fallout of these comrades. And when these comrades were, uh, in a sense, providing ide ideological um, and <coughs> theoretical guidance to the movement, they could not acknowledge the fact that the ideas, some of these ideas, uh, come from uh, the source, which, as we always do, you know, we, we, we always fall, fall, uh, we, we have our differences and then we split. Uh, there was a split in the, in the Black Bloc, which I had been working with up to this point. Now, I just want to say, if you go to the essay, there are two moments. But before I go to those two moments, let me go to the, these interactions I'm talking about. Uh, there were comrades like um, uh, Tumani, who, who was actually the big actor uh, on uh, the symbolic act against the statue of Rhodes, right? So comrade Tumani, uh, uh, we all know, he, he was an active or at least an active, active, an, a, it was active in the September National in Bezos space where this essay was a, was a critical text. I don't assume that he was not aware of the, this essay and, and what it meant. Not only that, I had been invited to the University of Cape Town by the Center of African Studies to discuss this particular essay, Blacks Can Be Racist. It was a full house, man. It was packed. It was one of the most exciting in, in, interactions. This is the year 2012. And I start talking and the professorial class move out of the room. They left. That's where I met people like uh, Wanelisa Kaba, where I met people like uh, Comrade Ziana Latehan, who had uh, given a lot of sustenance to, to that movement. We discussed Blacks Can Be Racist, UCT, 2012, right? 
And I, I, what, what of course fascinates me about that moment is when the professorial class, all the professors walked out of the lecture in protest. And then we had other conversation with comrades of, of, of now the PNC was organizing itself, Pasma there. But I mean, it, it, it was a more, uh, uh, <laughs> it was a more, uh, I was trying to say to Pasma, join, join me with, in, in EFF, you know, and Pasma rejected my proposition correctly. So with the benefit of insight, <laughs> you, you comrades did well. <laughs> but, Again, at that moment, it was a big conversation. And then come to VETS. VETS, it, 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 it was a little bit like my base. There's comrades there, comrade Goba, comrade Timbe, and others were involved in a thing called uh, the Black Thought. And we, we had not just interaction on the essay itself, but I would argue that uh, generally on the Black Radical uh, 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 project. Now, Two moments in the essay, which I read now, and I realize that we, we could not have missed. The first, there is in the essay, and I mean, okay, comrades, you know there's a big debate going on right now around the race and class question. I advise people just to read the essay. It will solve so many problems. You know, we will not be uh, detained by white, one white man who is telling us that we are Marxists and we, we, we are workers and all. Read the essay because we deal with this question decisively or on on the on the race uh, and class but but the point is this that uh, in the essay itself cecil john rhodes is been named specifically and dealt with in the essay cecil john rhodes as an arch colonialist and his project of converting of africans into into the proletariat and 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 there's some sustained argument in the essay about how Cecil John Rhodes' project uh, proletarizes us through dispossession, right? And how, if you were to think about liberation, you have to think about Cecil John Rhodes' moment. And a critique of labor, immediately, a critique of labor in the essay, a critique of this class project that Cecil John Rhodes had succeeded in making us desire the wage. And that was his project. He was very clear, Africans must lose land, they must become wage, wage laborers. This is his project. Africans must lose land and must become, they must work for us. This is John Rose. The Marxists are unable to understand why the idea of insisting on labor, uh, on, on, on class from this point of view, is in fact a, a pursuing the same project that Cecil John Rose has put for us. And I go there and I explain even the tensions amongst black people who are competing for work. That is Cecil John Rose. I'm raising this issue because Cecil John Rose does become symbolically a big point of uh, the Rose Must Fall moment attack as raising the colonial question. And then there's a second moment in the essay about the creation of blacks to the colonial project and, the, and, and, and basically education and religion as two moments of this creation of the black by the white project. And and there, there's a, again, talking I, with I discuss the first coconuts. I know that uh, I have called Bigo and uh, so we were coconuts to the displeasure of many Africanists and black consciousness adherents. <laughs> but but the, there, I, I, I raise this issue. And if you go, it's a very interesting quotation in the, in the essay itself. One of the coconuts of the time, Ubaba Ukunen, uh, the British, the essay go through that experience, the British um, on a, in the turn of the century, of last century, decided to threaten us, our Africans, and say, we're going to leave. This is uh, around 20, I think, 20, uh, the year 1909, I think, and they had a, 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 a commission, and they said they want to hear to, what Africans have got to say. And these educated Africans went and, and spoke to this commission. You know, he begged. I mean, you know, he said things like, uh, this guy is my Kakunene, 1903 rather, that's when the commission was set up. And I, I, mean, I, I mean, this quotation is, is really instructive. He says, if white people and the king of England were to desert us now and leave us here, there is a great section of us who have approximated to a great extent the white man's ways of living and to the white man's ways of doing things. And there is a large number of us who have not advanced at all. 
who have remained as they were practically in the former days. I'm afraid that those who have remained in the former state will kill us all, particularly the civilized natives, because we have bought lands and they do not approve of ownership of land. They know too that whenever there have been a war against the natives, natives like ourselves have always been with the colonial government and gone out to assist them with those wars. Therefore, we feel that we are better under our colonial government and you are far better than if we were deserted and left to the mercies of our people. Now, now that is a complete coconut uh, who identifies with the colonial project as a consequence of the education project. And, and I go again here on religious and on what the religious moment is in destruction of the African belief systems. So that's a theme that we'll discuss. Next discussion will, ha will happen is to look at what blacks can't be racist suggest with regard to religion as a moment of colonialism and resistance. Just like education is a moment. Look, I go on in this essay to quote Sartre and others about how it was a well-considered project, educate the native to be administrators of the colonial project. It was not education. They don't give us education because they love us. They gave us education because they wanted to make us into colonial subjects. So when Rose Must Fall raised that issue of the statue of Cecil John Rhodes, the colonial education, they were, in a sense, harping back on these themes which were in the essay. Right? And then I just like to conclude by saying that it was interesting for me to read the mission statement of, uh, of, of Roads Must Fall in particular. And also when they are arguing for exclusion of, of whites in the struggle, raising exactly the same arguments of this essay. Not only that, they even refer to the moment of the uh, Forum for Black Journalists. Remember, this essay, Blacks Can Be Racist, is written in response, this essay, Blacks Can Be Racist, is written in response to that moment when black journalists that form the Forum for Black Journalists and white journalists come and they say, no, you can't do that. They break into a meeting and then when black journalists kick them out, they went to the Human Rights Commission and the Human Rights Commission found against black journalists. And as a consequence, the Forum for Black Journalists was destroyed. Okay? So in the mission statement of the Rose Must Fall moment, we, we have references to the same material and references to white privilege exclusion, exactly the same arguments which had been made in the year 2009. Okay, so I'm arguing that there must have been some sort of awareness. It cannot be simply, uh, um, you know, coincidence. Of course, I make the, I make the, uh, the provision for, yeah, it could also be just a coincidence because these are black ideas and actually the essay does not, create any new ideas, what it does is assembles the same old ideas of resistance into a, similar, in, into a single text. I will, I will pause there by, by simply saying, I felt this essay, uh, and even as an author, has made a contribution which has not been recognized. And I'm not arguing for a direct causal relation, but the circulation of ideas which have been injected by this particular essay have something to do with the attitude of how the first uh, uh, moment Rose Must Fall was formulated. I'm, I'm, pre I'm preserving my take on the second moment of Fees Must Fall. So we are, we are very clear conceptually, it's the first moment of Rose Must Fall, and I'm arguing this is the, the most radical moment, and this is the moment which refuses um, uh, integration, just like the essays attempt to refuse this possibility of being assumed into the project of the oppressor. And that moment I'm arguing dovetails in very interesting ways with this essay. So um, let's hear what you comrades have got to say just in this first uh, uh, claim that I make about perhaps the essay has not been recognized sufficiently as playing some kind of a role in that moment. Uh, comrade, yeah, comrade, can, can uh, I go first? Pastor is going first, yeah? Yeah, no, I mean, you make a lot of interesting points. I mean, um, especially surrounding the fact that um, there, before anything of the movement, there was a particular interaction prior before the movement for some of us. 
you know. And, and that particular interaction, we always say, the problems that we have inherited in black spaces, the sewer problems are about Babu SNI in black, you know, and Namogu black wash, and you know, we have inherited <laughs> along the way some of those problems. We have, we, we have, we find ourselves in Kaban Abanu that we don't even know where this battle comes from, you know. And, and, and that particular, those particular tension play themselves out on which parts of um, the text we will recognize, which parts of the text that we will not recognize. There's no doubt of that. I mean, even the fact that um, when we used to host a lot of panels, you could already see the tension of who's going to get invited, who's not going to get invited. And I think this brings form, I mean, those particular tensions of the past. And I think we must really, at some point, really speak about honestly, uh, between the generation of the SNI to e Blackwash to those who even joined the EFF, and some of how their ideological and personal problems has been so much of any hindrance for us to create a new space, so alternative open Azalian front. And I think it, it is difficult for us to organize outside of those things. But on the other part, there, there is something interesting I was reading around the, the, the statement of the movement. Um, you will know, I mean, Abondo Gozo uh, were part of the people who were drafting that particular statement. Aboru, um, prior before that, in the university, there were different uh, movements, particularly in UCT. Uh, you have almost like um, Ecolite, a movement which was called Ecolite, which was a cultural movement where I first met Abondo Gozo and Aboru. And you had um, the Black Feminist Bloc, uh, which was organizing a case uh, at that time, um, where Abu Mase, Abu Mbali were also there. And then you had some of us who were organizing in Mbizo and subsequently went to form Ipaz. And I think how we sort of looked at the Rosemars Fall moment was a predecessor of some of the moments that had happened in the country. To begin. So we were not operating in some isolation from what was happening in the country, you know, at that time. And not so long ago, when the game Marikana, um, there was Tunisia, the, the Arab Spring, just after, you know, not so, um, after, sub, closer to Marikana. And then there was also in UJ, a, a mother who died in the, in, in the line. So there were a lot of activities um, which were happening in the country. Here we are, we're plugged into university for the first time. Um, I mean, even when we, some of comrades organized uh, the People's Manifesto um, in Cape Town in the March, um, when Kumani came in wearing a South African flag. <laughs> <laughs> but all I'm saying that, um, of course, growing up, there is those particular interactions. And there is, those interactions are omitted in the ways in which the movement plays. I think it has to do with personal issues more than political issues. But on, this, on, on the more fundamental part, the roads must fall movement, uh, particularly <coughs> on centering roads, uh, was to try and say that colonial relations are still primary contradictions within South African society. And because we're entering into a white university and we're trying to wrestle with the fact that nothing about this place repre represents us or resembles us. But th there has to be a, a way in which we read this space outside of just itself, but as a totality of the, the entire kind, you know. And I think this is what we were trying to do and in, to think about it. I think we did stumble on your ideas, even though people do not want to accept that um, from the beginning. But the way in which we stumbled on your ideas, it, it was an, a, a way to gain the language of how we can pol do politics in university. I remember when we used to shout, blacks can't be racist. Um, it was seen as the most practical stance that one we can take to exclude white people. Do you recall stay in the university, right? And precisely because we, we were trying to define racism as a power dynamic system within in itself. But let me just leave it there so that I can give Abanyabandu um, a chance. Uh, but it's not, it was not a coincidence. I don't think it was a coincidence. And even on the South African Black um, Journalist Forum, we, we, we were making references of what we have read and also what we have seen 
to say we want to locate ourselves within the particular activities, but those activities must be read within the racial lines. Thank you. Comrade Choban, you want to go next? Thank you very much. He is. Yeah, man. Greetings, comrades, man. Um, I think for me, because the, 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 the Rhodes moment, I, I, I watch it from outside, right? So for me, it's, it's, it's very difficult to comment on the nuances of the inside and how, how, what comrades were going through in Talevi as the movement was forming itself. Uh, but watching from outside, and, and as, as Mkri was saying that, the parallels are there for everyone to see. Right. If you interact with the ESA and you interact with uh, what the Roads Must Fall movement presents itself as, especially intellectually, you, you can already see the parallels. But as Thomas Kole is saying, that it's very difficult then to say that the parallels were co coincidental, that we, 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 the, the, the Fallist moment at, Ro at, at UCT interact or finds itself speaking the parallels that's the SA Black Spirit speak about as a matter of coincidence and not as a matter of interaction with the ESA itself, right? But also one would maybe, maybe make another comment and say, it is possible for, and I think my scholar mentions this, that it is possible for the parallels to exist for the ideological source is the same, right? So this comrades, quickly make an argument of themselves being black conscious pan-Africanist and black radical feminist. And when you interact with the text, and as we're saying, uh, Corporate Andile, that from which we read in, from, that you organize into the black country races, uh, is, it, is the same source that this Corporate could have interacted with. And then it is possible that they could have <coughs> arrived at, uh, they could have arrived at the same intellectual point in terms of how they organize themselves. But for me, where I struggle, or I strike, I think Uma Skole mentions that this, and also I think you've made mention of it, is the idea of as much as parallels exist, and these parallels, we, we, some of us may agree that they are not coincidental, that there is a matter of interaction between the author, the essay, and the comrades organizing. The big problem of Amitritama becomes mentioned as a contributing factor in how we think, for me, is not, not a matter of intellectual, uh, or is not an intellectual issue. And as Thomas Kole was saying, I think for me that becomes a personal, a personality issue. It is a matter of saying who does the who does the idea come from rather than the ideas themselves. Because quickly in this moment, and I think later. Uh, I will recall some of the events and spaces and, and some of the interactions we had with comrades where the name Andil Mkutama becomes a word that you can mention freely without comrades uh, attacking you or, in a way, saying this is a name but that I'm is not a nice to be mentioned. To I know, I know. I will. <laughs> for me, you <laughs> are, but not for everyone, right? That's how life is. But I mentioned this intentionally to say, in as much as, because I think for me, and I was saying to other companies who were asking, why are you doing these things around black country races that, uh, that you are doing? And I say one point that I think Andy Kusama has a right to fight for his rightful place as one of the intellectual, lead intellectual leaders of the post-1994 black radical, black radical tradition scholarship. And the problem that the black radical tradition and those who who follow it post 1994, reduce Mkutama's space as one of its leaders is a point of tension. Then we must ask a question of whether <laughs> there is this matter of Mkutama's ideas being so bad that they need not be mentioned, or is it a matter of personal differences with particular companies who have influenced the police generation to review Mkutama as personal and grata in the intellectual space? I think I will stop there so that uh, we, we, we allow other companies to intervene. Comrade Zania, you want to go? Yeah, of course. Um, it's all right. um, me and, and, and Tobani are just unfortunate because we are students at historically black universities, right? Um, and this FMF thing has always been a kumbaya at, 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 at our universities, right? Um, 
where it was always the question of, of fees, but not founded on the ideopolitical, right? It was not founded on just um, questioning also the, 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 the politics of South Africa, the political landscape of the country, and of course, the relationship between Blacks and education, right? So that is where we had would find ourselves at previously Black universities, where the race question during FMF is, um, is not largely, um, 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 or prior even, FMF is not entertained when there are protests, right? Um, um, Okanye, there is um, um, a collective um, resistance that, that, that so takes place. But um, a beautiful thing happens within the FMF where um, the race question therefore is discussed, but also at the same time, it will then be, 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 be a lie to us to even assume and even say that probably the vast majority of, of Okanye, the whole constituents or the whole mass of, of this mass hall was fully inclined to the politics of, of blackness, the politics of racism, right? Because I say, and I make this submission because it is only the core group, if I were to put it in that manner, uh, for the lack of, of better words, that understood, um, uh, understood those politics, right? Um, this is in FMF because I can't really speak fully on, 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 on who Rose must fall, right? Even though Rose must fall um, um, is, of course, and gives birth to FMF, but I'm not fully at that institution, neither am I fully in the activism that takes place within that space. But of course, the politics of, 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 of Rose must fall in a way that transcend to, to FMF in terms of trying to shape um, the political or kind of the ideological posture of, 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 of the movement. But also, of course, at the same time, what I was afraid of when I'm clear was the fact that when this question of black country raises, where do we where where do we even fit it in FMF without um putting the face of 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 Andy Limgitam, right? Because for me, I'm I'm gonna talk for Azania specifically to say that the question of of black country racist was not a question that was even discussed now from a space I was in at the point in time. So I would not even say that 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 that, that question or kind of the politics of of, of black country racism did find expression in the university I was in, but of course within the spaces therefore, that after fizz must fall, and I probably I'm going to submit this when I'm speaking to the critics of, 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 of the movement and how we could have possibly have, 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 have shaped the movement and could have possibly um, um, have gained instead of having so much reversal, uh, reverse, um, 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 irreversal as a movement. But also, um, at the same time, it, it, what I'm been such mad the fact that um, when we're speaking of black country races, there's always a Mkutama that is put into that. So how I know of that race um, question is because of also the patriarchal bond that Andle Mkutama always has with um, your FF plus, um, um, your freedom front plus, you know. So um, they, 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 because of people at grassroots level, of course, are not fully much um, informed by this politics of race, right? But instead they're informed by, by this hogwash of, of non-racialism of the politics of the ANC, which then Fizz Must Fall comes into existence post FMF to say that, look, um, there's Asenai, there's Abu Angel who've been saying that 1994 did for all for Udaki. I would say in that essence, probably we interrogated some, 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 some of um, the doings of Abantu and the youth that has been speaking to this politics that ourselves, but also to what um, 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 Uzikalala is saying to say that, um, of course, at the same time, you would not find um, probably a parallel or any coincidental because also at the same time, um, we read from the same books, right? So we read Fanon, right? We're able to understand that um, I'm this in, I'm in this position because of I am black, right? I am poor because we understand that thing because of of Fanon and the books. So for me, it was not a matter of coincidence. Um, in other words, it's a matter of it influencing the politics of Fismas. But of course, we can speak then um, from for your previously white universities because. Um, if my memory says well, you have these engagements of, of blacks can be racist with um, other um, um, folks within black um, white institutions, right? And of course, which has been something that has been historically going on because also to have this um, conversation within this, this, this white liberal institution meant therefore that we are questioning even the existence because we understand why these universities were created from inception, right? So for me, it was even justifiable when you had it there. But yeah, that's my submission. It was not um, coincidental, neither did um, 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 Black country racist inform FISMAS for, because I'm running away from that. Um, influence um, FISMAS for, you didn't. Yeah. 
Diabule la Comrade. Comrade, comrade Tekoba. Yeah, eh, hey, Makabane, Sinbulise. Good evening and good evening to the rest of the South African students. We hope you are well uh, during this crisis. It's COVID-19. Uh, <laughs> entire higher education fraternity sent into an abyss by Bill Gates. But nonetheless, thanks for the platform and thanks for 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 having us tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to start on the uh, the, the, the obvious questions of uh, how we come to understand uh, the text, and then of course veer off and then go on to to the to the movements as we understand them. And um, I think the text uh, before it got to the national conversation of you know fees must fall, roads must fall. In institutions of higher learning, uh, before that you had resistant student bodies which were black organized in your Nelson Mandela University and your black you know student stock fell essentially in your in your in your in your vets you UJ you had your black dot symposium you know at at, at UCT I think I must call it they had a movement as well with Kuba and Abolabo and then you you had you had the historical you know binary between the student movement which was largely contested by SASPO and PASMA the Pan African student movement being historically the only, you know, African, you know, sort of resistance to the structural SAS for the space that was contested then. And then you then have the text in its written format trying to make sense of not only the condition of South Africa, but how far we've come as a country into not only dabbling with the reality of racism, but also into understanding whether uh, are we really free and what does this freedom mean and in the context of higher education. It's when then these ideas get disseminated in when we ask ourselves what we mean by, 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 by racism, what, is, what, what do we mean by saying someone is racist, uh, between your divides, your historically black, historically white institutions, uh, do we does do these uh, features of underdevelopment reflect this long-standing, you know, racism or not? Uh, the crisis in your, you know, colleges and, you know, what have you? And then you then have you you you, you then have the text during the moment of, because these stages of these black student movements, they, are, they form as you know, consciousness bringing spaces where people come together, they congregate, we share literature, we share music, we, we share all sorts of things, but also there are spaces where we, 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 we touch on to what is not necessarily touched by you know, mainstream student political fraternity, which was you know, largely majority, SASCO and, you know, Pasba being the one that is contesting them in that terrain. This was the case until at least 2015, when you had a moment in which you had Rose Must Fall, which took place at UCT, which I, 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 I make a lendoga between these two moments because I don't think, number one, I think these are two moments which are by and large intertwined to each other. I think. Rose Must Fall spoke to the reality of a structural realm which has not been resolved as, as, as of your land, as of your, you know, the, the historical national liberation question. But also, Fees Must Fall is, then expresses the socio-economic reality of a road which is yet to fall. So Fees Must Fall becomes the concrete expression at which then we, 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 we gather momentum to actually realize, even those that are not aware, to say, Actually, this thing is happening. What do you then do after that? There's, there's a whole movement that speaks, you know, a, a, a post that, that, that moment in here. People start asking themselves about their hair, you know, students in high schools start speaking about their hair. The question then in multiracial school, people start, no, you know, when we went to these schools, people would speak about our hair like this, would, would do that not to wear our hair like this. Then a movement, Yabo Zuleika, started emerging. So all these fallisms, 
they speak in a certain direction. In that spelling, there was a labor question as well in which workers, because in this question of workers, it was not also just workers, it was to say who are these workers, why these workers, and why so long in higher education have concerns of these people who have been you know, working at these universities, but now all of a sudden have become sort of you know, uh, absent in this space. And then you then had this synthesis, I think what Rose Maskell did at, 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 at an imaginative level was that to say the symbolic falling of the statue, it asked the fact that, you know, from the statue, it went on to the distem, to the down, you know, why do we still have names of certain towns? Why do we still have, you know, city centers named after certain people? Why do we have, you know, colonial? It, 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 it went beyond that because also this process was, 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 was post a process of, you know, the labor movement in Maragana, workers have just been butchered. Uh, and, and there was also the relationship between higher education and, you know, capital as well, in the sense that there were people who were, you know, ordinarily would be your Maraganas, but at the same time, a fund you city, Ganja, Ganja. And that relation, that relationship of drawing that parallel between that relationship between capital, higher education, and then how do we then post after after all these years in a terrain where students have been contesting whether we are free or not, you have a movement asking these very same questions that what do we conceive of our freedom? Because okay, if you're Comrade Gova, of, I, may, may I interrupt you there? I think that we, we have sure. you, you have introduced you have introduced a bit of critique of, of the movement itself. But I think that we, we must uh, recognize the contributions that are made by Comrade Tobani and Comrade Azania in as far as the, there's a um, okay, I'm coming insight there. into black universities and the modality of struggle there is basically I'm coming on, there. Yes, oh, you come in there. You you have two minutes because you know we yeah. have, we we suppose to have an hour and we have yeah, yeah, fifteen there. minutes left there. and we have another round in the so this you have this? two minutes. Sure, sure, sure. So this, 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 this concrete expression then, this concrete expression between these realms, because the, 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 the FMF question largely is expressed, the FMF question largely is expressed, the FMF question largely is expressed in historically black institutions in which even the TVET sector comes into the foreplay because it, it would be then this, this, this clear distinction of you know, the underdevelopment, uh, 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 does it appear or apply, or is it enough to characterize it as racism enough, as opposed to your historically white institution where the, the, the structure, which is the oppressor, is clearly the same. By the way, in all institutions, higher education as a whole in South Africa is a colonial and captured tool. They serve the very same purpose. But between these historical institutions in which your TUT, University of Zululand, Forte, uh, 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 and, and the larger historically black institutions, your, your vistas, the crisis match is 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 is, 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 is the focus, or rather, is in the material aspect of the development of these institutions, because the crises are not felt the same. For instance, when the crisis of COVID nineteen now facing e learning, and the fact that such questions and how we understand racism have gotten to where they have gotten, they have an you know interplay in you know historically white, historically black. I think I'm I'm, I'm going overboard. Let me, let me thank let, you. Let me, no, no, no. But I mean, we'll come back to that issue. Come back over. They're flowing. Thanks. We'll thanks. come back to that issue because uh, we, it's important in this segment, the next segment, to talk about how there's a move from. Rose must fall to the second moment of fees must fall. And it is clear that in the historically black institutions, fees must fall is always a feature. There, there is no this movement that we see. In fact, one of the critiques is that the movement uh, Rose must fall in these white institutions appropriates the struggles which are as a matter of you know, existence there in the blacks universities. Every year, TUT is going to strike. University of KwaZulu-Natal is black, is going to strike. This nothing novel about uh, annual resistance for fees, right? So when this movement 
surrenders to the fees must fall movement moment but the spokesperson of the fees must fall moment are from historically a white institution there was an appropriation of the struggles which are belong to these black universities i mean that's a big critique and and this is a consequence of the cultural capital that comes with being located in the white university the, the media does not, it's not going to uct or to to forte to ask for a, an opinion about uh, why students are on strike it goes to vets and so you saw vets and uct at one moment becoming the biggest but they had abandoned the critique is when you go to bread and butter issues of fees, you abandon the big question of the colonial structure of society. And, and, and the critique of the movement in its entirety, therefore, is it become a student movement instead of being a liberation movement. When the questions raised in the first moment of roads must fall are, are questions of liberation, the totality of liberation of black people, not just the fight for inclusion through the medium of, of fees. When you're just struggling for fees, at this moment you want inclusion. You are not questioning the structure of the university or of, the, this, of society. You are saying I'm excluded and I have a right to be included. Right? But this is not a new question, as I say. This is a question that black universities, as a consequence of being excluded by virtue of being black, have always raised and and it was not being raised it always get resolved around maybe the second semester you know they those who can be expelled are expelled are gone and those who survive are in there they survive life continues but the first the roads must fall moment was a moment that questioned the colonial uh, structure the colonial logic of the university of course this is the first thing i think i want to say that the movement from roads must fall to fees must fall Interestingly enough was the dropping of the big colonial question and we moved to class now. Bread and butter issue. We just want in. We're fighting, in fact, we're not even fighting government mostly. We're fighting the, the university establishment, which we see as a problem. So the, university, the, the student movement, therefore, at this point become reformist proper from the promises of, of a possible fundamental questioning of society. I mean, one of the critiques that I have made is that not in the essay, subsequently, is that you can't have a decolonized university in a colonial society. And this movement started raising decolonization as a very narrow project. Now it has become an industry, you know, decolonization of how you drink water, decolonization of how you work, decolonization of uh, how you answer your phone, you know, say anything and then add decolonization, you are in, you get published, you get, you go, you know, all that. So, so this has become a meaningless project uh, of this colonization. But I want to just also say, as yes, you will also uh, make, make your points on this second, fees must fall. Fees must fall has always been the project of black universities, simply fighting for survival, nothing big, revolutionary. These black students just want to get education so that they can get a job. It's not a big thing, but it is big in as far as they are really excluded. And therefore, just like a worker, workers, we must fight for the improvement of the wage, but we don't call it revolutionary anything. It is a reformist, legitimate struggle for survival. So the, when you come to the fees must fall moment, this is, what, this is what we see. But I do want to say that um, in as far as the essay is concerned and its influences where they could have been, and it is true that I had engaged with things like the Black Stock Fell that Comrade Goba spoke about. I have spoken even to the student at Rhodes. They had an organization called Black Student Society, which had white members. I have some communication with them where I asked them, but you are claiming to be black consciousness. Explain to me this white membership in your movement. And they never answered me up to today. They are not all employed, I'm told, in very big companies and they are managers of capital, right? Um, but the, 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 the one thing that I, ho I, I hope we can raise is that there was a silence in the essay in as far as the feminist project is called. Black feminism is not at all raised. And this silence, I think, has been, in a sense, dealt with when uh, roads must fall, start thinking about what it means. But in the essay, they, there is no attempt, there is no, it is, there is no you know, move towards that direction. What, what there is moved towards is resistant to co-optation of the black radical project. Co-optation should not happen 
and this is the this is the modality of the essay itself. So the first critique of the movement, therefore, is that it moved from the, the race question to survival class, and we see the same way. And I mean, let me just say this: it it the appropriation of this black university struggles. But there's also one thing that I I now think about in the contemporary situation. The biggest beneficiaries of the Rose Must Fall moment is economic freedom fighters at university level. I mean, isn't that interesting that a decolonial race, a pro-black project, which calibrates a large uh, part of the movement, ends up benefiting a project that sees itself as Marxist-Leninist and really not about race. Something is happening here which has not been uh, thought through. It's either this cohort of students don't really think through what they are supporting ideologically. They're supporting something that seems like resistance. And, 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 and the EFF has been able to appropriate to itself this um, identity of we are the representative of resistance. So if, if you were initially you know, moved by these big questions, you will end up in fact supporting EFF, which you don't know ideologically. It's not actually consistent with uh, the, the real moment of questioning, which is uh, Rose Must Fall, which is an anti-colonial moment and, 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 and a pro-race moment, uh, which does not find expression ideologically in the, the, the party that ends. I mean, UCT, supposed to be a proper, from the work that they've been there, proper, I mean, like a, at least plasma space. Vets uh, is also gone, and not only has, uh, Sasko taken back, which I think is a good thing because Sasko is consistent in its ideological project. It doesn't claim to be anything than what it is. But we see that, that there's been a reversal ideologically. And I'm, I, I wonder if we have time for you, Comrade, to simply maybe reflect on that, on, on this appropriation, that the movement has been appropriated by the white institution because of cultural capital and closeness to whiteness. But the movement as it is, I think, is historical. It says historical is 1976. There is nothing we can say contemporary about the movement in terms of the first promises that it presented. Comrade Maston. I, I think I have, a, I have a, a bit of a challenge, you know, and, I, and I've been having um, this challenge for the most part. One thing that um, the fees must fall is an appropriation struggle. You know, we take from the black universities. I don't think it's entirely true because um, for the longest time, the, the, the type of questions or demands which black historical universities have been raising have been about access, have been about bread and butter issues. When, when RMF emerges, it, it tries to say, look, UCT, you are not an exceptional university that has to live and experience outside of South Africa. There are, there, are, there are months where black institutions just close down and UCT continues as if it's not part of the lived experiences of what higher education suffers. So it brings the, the white university for the first time in post-1994 at the center of the lived experiences of black people in, in, in higher education. I think this is very crucial. In, in ways in which it makes the, the country to respond to try to organize than Marikana did it. You know, our people were shot um, in, in Marikana, they died, and no one dared to wake up tomorrow and mobilize, uh, close down the entire country. But Tumani, out of nowhere, decides to throw a poo in a white statue. Suddenly, there is an uproar all over the country, black people are starting to realize their alienation in the country they, which they think belongs to them. And suddenly it dawns upon us that actually we have only been citizens only in 1994. Past that, we have always been excluded in this country and its making. And Rhodes in himself becomes the epitome of that. It becomes a face in which we can reference. And I think this is important because it links the white university not only just being an exceptional, but it's also a co-producer of the misery of black people in this country, constantly. And I think this is what the movement tries to do. And I mean, even the, the so-called 
Secondly, the, RM, uh, the FMF moment. I mean, the FMF moment, even though um, comrades would like to say it has been you know, consistently in black historical movement, but it's for the first time that a country or the students are actually mobilized and coordinated nationally over a particular call. That not only just for a few months, but for years of years consistently going about, you know, challenging the university. And two, which brings not only just the students, but brings also the question of workers, black workers in particular, and the struggle of outsourcing. I mean, even today, we know that there are few universities that have actually been able, in fact, my argument, I argue that when even the FMF um, call, which was done, it was on the basis of SASCO comrades um, who, in some way, we, we voluntarily left RMF because of the race question, because we're excluding white people in the movement, you know. And suddenly, some of these comrades are nonpartisan. Uh, months of organizing uh, and mobilizing uh, students after the statue fell, and when the statue fell, we had about three principles that we wanted to focus on. One was on the issue of fees, one was an issue of curriculum, and one was an issue of, of workers. When we were about to suddenly deal with these things, a issue of fees emerges out of that the universities and government are planning to increase fees, companies let us mobilize, taking into this consideration. And suddenly, companies of SASCA and nonpartisan have emerged into the space to say, this can't be a race-based struggle. This can be a, a, a non-racial struggle. I think that battle we have lost. We lost that battle in plenaries, we lost that battle in conferences. Uh, we lost that battle even up until now when Congress do not want to realize that the basis of calling for fees to fall was an ideological question, not just a question of access. Precisely because it was speaking about how even the state that we in can adopt progressive uh, demands when they are called by the masses. Like our cause of nationalization of the mines, our cause of expropriation without compensation, all of these calls continue to build up a block of a black fighting block system where we can actually call for practical demands that can alleviate our people. So this is what we were imagining when we have actually called for free socialistic education for some of us in the past. That this question is not just a new question, it is an old question embedded within our politics. That you cannot have an education system that continues to exist from only for a few in this country. And that few meaning white people who are guaranteed to create a private institutions and public institutions. So I really want to say that I don't really think comrades are really thinking about how it was important for us to bring the experiences of South Africa to white universities. And I think to bring that experience allowed us to create a national coordination in a way in which to say, Companies, no one cares what happens in Wusu, but people care when you touch a child of Rupert there in the city or a child of Rupert. Precisely because this is where power and, and, and how power functions or is reproduced in those particular institutions. And for, for, for a longest time, black people have been not touching those institutions. And we think it's Thank high time, come. yeah, we go to white institutions. Come back, Tobani. Okay. No, man. Uh, <laughs> I I want to first maybe deal with uh, the idea of the historical black university and the historical white university and the struggle for access and the struggle for fees. Look, man. The first thing that we must say, and I think, as much as I hear the 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 the, the, the point, my scholar is making, but the, the the first thing that we must make, the point we must make is that. The question of fees and, and access for the historically black university is like a ritual. You get what I'm saying? It is something that every beginning of the semester, we are on the streets. Uh, as, as we go to uh, after exams, for, our, uh, for after the first semester and going to the second semester, we are on the street. It is, it is embedded in the DNA of the historically black universities as the most, because if you look carefully, the most violent expression of the apartheid categorization of society is found in the historically black university. 
Now, the fullest moment, we will not discount it for the fact that it finally raised that though the violence of the upper categorization is most felt by the black university, it is also felt where it is reproduced in the white university. So we can't discount the fact that what the roads must fall, fees must fall moment happening in the white university is it was a bad thing. I don't think it was a bad thing. But where it became a hit of a bad thing, I think for many, for many black people in the country and for many black students was, I think, what you term the, the appropriation of the movement and the taking over of the spokesmanship and the, the language upon which we express ourselves. Because suddenly, the leader of the communication and the spokesman spokesmanship was not in the historically black university where the mobilization and the numbers to push forward were. That's, I think, for me, is the first point. The second point upon which maybe we can credit the Fuse Must Fall movement for, even though the historically black universities and the university has always been on the street, is an idea of pre the fullest moment, the mobilization for access, for reform, for free education, or whatnot, has always been a campus based phenomenon. So you will find that University of Cape and Westville, which is now called UKZN Westville Campus, will have their own struggles. UKZN has its own struggles, and other universities have their own struggles. And there's always an insistence of raising campus based issues. I remember at UKZN when I came in at Howard College, there was, there was a grouping of, uh, of comrades called the Society of Commons, right? Every, which for me is then most of where the comrades who became fallist came from. The general student movement always insisted on us not raising national questions, but raising questions in the campus space. So it had to raise issues about racism on campus and whatnot for you to be able to get the mass on the ground, which is then maybe where the critique around access becomes because you know in the historically black universities as a matter of how compatible we become in the space but i think uh, another another point and i think i don't know it maybe it would be mischievous of me to bring it in but i want to bring it in excuse me so the that's, that, that's your last point that's your last point Oban. yes is the idea that when the roads must on the furthest moment happens it coincides with a program already happening in Brazil. And the idea of SASCO coming into the fallist movement is not a coincidence of mobilization. At least from where in the campus that I in where it was happening. It was a matter of saying the fallist movement has a third force, SASCO must reconsolidate and drive the program in such a way that the so-called third force is not able to, to, to control the movement. So you have a situation here where Sasko, when they come in, they come in in a way where they are, they are taking over the ground that they believe belongs to them. And they've got instruction from above in the ANC to take over the ground again. And I think we must reflect on that point and say, why does Sasko come in when they've rejected the police moment before? Why do they specifically come in in the, in the, in the second semester period of police of, of Christmas fall? And even in 2016, towards the marches to union buildings and the marches in, in the city of Japan. I think for me, those are the three points. Thank you. Comrade Koba. Yeah, your thing is off. I'm fine now. Yeah. It's fine now. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'm fine now. Anyway. Okay, sure. So I think I think uh, I mean the the overly stated points. I I don't want to go back to the overly stated points. I think we we we, we there's a there's a general agreement to to what the, the you know roads must fall is and but but I also I, I I want I want to speak to a moment as well. Part of this transition to the fullest moment where in South Africa for the first time in the fraternity of higher education, we have a political decision in which fees are halted, right? There's a no fee increment, right? Now, this is a result of pressure from the ground, a mass mobilization pressure from the students. This pressure point forces a sitting head of the state 
to actually bypass a finance minister, which suggests that no, through the commission of Hehe, these students that are saying they want free education, which is, by the way, a political question, a national liberation question, when people went to struggle and said that they are coming to speak to changing and reorganizing national economy, part of how they cater for the masses of people, part of how they cater for people who have historically lived with the yoke of colonialism, to get them out of those bed sets would then be, you know, giving them access to, 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 to state resources in the form of free education. This moment culminates for the first time, Jacob Zuma decides that no, uh, there's not going to be any fee increase, you know? Uh, there's no increase at UCT. Vice chancellors across the country uh, 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 don't agree with this thing, you know, uh, that no, but where is the money? Asna Mali, where is the money going to come from? There's a huge fracas when Pravin Kodano was the Minister of Finance to say no, but we don't have the money. He then refers us to banks to even suggest that no, the only way that we can deal with this conception of access, because this conception of access is not a conception of access with no history. It is a result of a underdevelopment caused by a colonial setting. So to say you are giving people free education can't be said, no, it's a basic question of access. It's like saying that people take to the streets each and every year precisely because their matters have not been resolved. That's why historically black students protest each and every year precisely because there are issues which are caused of underdevelopment, which is yet to be resolved. This question of socioeconomic reality of a road which is not fallen is then outplaying itself in these, you know, historically black institutions because this is where underdeveloped, it's like the township when 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 floods happen, those that stay near the riverbanks, the troops say in, in the shacks, they are the ones that are going to be, you know, prone to these things. You don't then say the Sheik Dollars movement, Abashali Basem John Dolo, you know, because year in, year out, you know, they are shot by by the by by by, by the councillors of the ANC in Basula, they are shot each and every time uh, uh, by the city of Depen municipality, Ganjan, Ganjan, Ganjan. It can then be made as in the useless. Maybe the question here is that also there is an appreciation. SASCO is the largest student movement in the country. Whether we like it or not, uh, 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 we must give this analysis. We, we must analyze SASCO as, 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 as comrades who are part of the revolutionary process in higher education, understanding that they are actors which influences certain positions. How? SASCO becomes a player during the process of then pushing. There's a moment where we go to union buildings. We go to union buildings, SRC presidents are all called, right? That uh, we, 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 have, we, have, we have a crisis. Uh, but the president suggested, no, come on SRC president, let's discuss, let's discuss and agree. The Minister of Finance, the Minister of Higher Education played the mandate, both in Bravin, agree, they take a position which is, in fact, materially colonial in the sense that they say, no, there's no money. In fact, what these students are saying is wrong. In fact, private security, violence, uh, uh, this, is, this, this is where, before it gets even to the larger aspect, this is where it's contested to say, Minister of Finance through fiscal consolidation to saying that, no, we don't have the money. As a minister, we're not going to give you. Uh, also, as a minister of higher education, there's no will from our side. But from the masses of students, which but are mobilizing, please con conclude, conclude, please conclude this. No, thought but of Andile, Andile, no, don't do that. Andile, don't do that. Let's have a conversation. Don't pull us and yank us to a direction. Don't do that. Let's have a conversation. Be fair. Don't don't bully. We are speaking. Let's speak. Let's understand each other because we are speaking again. Lastly, my my point is the, the point that I want to make here at the center of this thing. There is a resource which is contested. What is this resource? It is the resource of knowledge. Higher education uh, is a resource which is contested in South Africa by the contending forces, which white monopoly capital and us forces who are fighting against white monopoly capital. We do agree that in higher education, there are forces which 
are against the development of the native people. And this trajectory then, when we speak of knowledge and what students can do, because we understand that students as themselves, they can't carry out the revolution. They can only spark it in terms of ideas, knowledge, and what have you. But the revolution can only be carried out by the students in conjunction with the masses of the people. So in conjunction, what I am saying, when I am knowing, is that we must also narrate this moment that the fee question brought us a 0% fee moment, which there's no president in South Africa which has given us that process. I know you're a kid of Sholosi. Sholosi is your guy. I don't know how you feel about this position, but we, we speak of the fee question where, you know, we, we can't necessarily speak about something which, because it went on to influence even in the ruling party inside the government policy, which now we have seen there's a, you know, a, a turn from what was supposed to be to what is currently. And uh, I was going to explain the text of Blacks Can't Be Racist and its understanding, a, 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 helping us to understand racism. What is racism? What is not racism? Who is racist? Who can be racist? Why these trajectories, a degree in Forte and the same degree at UCT for the same thing, they are not equal the same. But uh, it's a story for another day. Thank you. Come back to sure, Tanzania. Sure. We, we're waiting for Komita Zania to come, to come on. But now we are, we are just concluding this part of the critique of the, of the movement. And I mean, remember, the, this whole conversation is about the, the influences of Black First Land. I mean, um, Blacks can be racist on the movement, these ideas, and there's a shift from the first moment of rose must fall, now the fees must fall. And the, how fees must fall, there's, there's, there's some kind of understanding that it suggests a move from the race anti-colonial questions raised by the first moment. Yes, Comrade Azania. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry for this. Um, I have a previous still of mine, just, it, it, I don't know, it's probably the let check. But yeah, of course, sorry, because some of the conversation I missed because in, I have a problem with the, the Wi-Fi connection here. I don't know, ten, you know, more than but I think it's the perks of being in these universities. But um, of course, what I wanted to highlight, and I hear my scholars have machine rights, um, but also at the same time, I think what we should then agree upon is the fact that office muscle does not transpire the same um, 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 in, in all universities, right? Um, there are different factors that, that contribute, but also at the same time, office must fall is something, as we have said in the argument, that keeps on within the black universities, right? But of course, there's this culture within black universities of which even that culture is maintained by the bigger student movement of calling, of course, um, 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 the black student, the children of the working class, which on its own then negates that whole race question. Because of I, I, I want to add to that, even though we are protesting, we do understand that um, the superstructure or those that are in power within our universities we don't bring the question of race because of there's, there's, there's this relationship that exists with the powers that be. There's this relationship that, that, that exists with the um, bigger student movement, which is SASCO, right? And this is, of course, in the peak of Fismas Fall. Um, I remember even at GWC, there was once a time when um, the free increment was, was announced that there's going to be a zero free increment, when majority of students were saying that um, but forces we did not fight for free um, for zero free increment. What we wanted was a free decolonist um, 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 education, which of course informs the movement, even because institution opinion in Quebec. Because I remember there's loudness within other universities, while black universities are still co continuing with this question of 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 of, of business, all right, um, where there's still violence that is still transpiring within um 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 I, 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 black universities, right, but. Of course, at the center of that, it is our understanding that, number one, anyway, the powers that be in our universities might be black, um, but it does not mean that just because they are, they are black, they are not reactionary. It does not mean that um, when there are powers that be, that when they are black and, and within these spaces, therefore, they can't be um, 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 classist, or therefore, they are not even maintaining the institutionalized racism at which we experience, right? It then informs why um, and the, relation, the historical relationship between Blacks, right, and education within these historically Black um, 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 universities. So for me, 
agree that we, we must just agree on disagree the fact that we have it transpired in a different manners within different universities and of course there is going to be um 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 um, um that difference because also you are speaking to universities i almost call it when historically there's Abu Achima Fetcher who have been at the center of questioning and decolonization of the curricula, right? Then you just come to a, a universities where protests have always been um, based upon Itai affair, you know, um, 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 issues of accommodation. But all of these issues that you have been um, protesting around about um, in, in, in black universities, even though they are not under the umbrella or the banner of Fismas Fon, it's either a, a, a black feminist um, 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 issue be it either an existential crime, but all of these issues were fundamentally informed by the fact that we are black, we are dispossessed, um, we are landless, and we exist in a settler colony, which in this instance is South Africa. And post-1994, and as young people, we still find ourselves within institutions, therefore, that perpetuates this violence, even though um, I'm, I'm, I'm the face of the structure has been changed, but here is this racism that still continues and that still manifests itself in terms of the pedagogy of teaching, in terms of just everything, therefore, that transpires and takes place within these institutions. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my two cents for now. Thank you. Comrades, we, 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 are, we, have, we have over an, an hour. So what, what, what we must do now is each of us to provide, say, one and a half minute maximum Conclude, concluding remarks and just going back to our original question of whether uh, blacks can be racist has in fact uh, influenced the uh, fees must fall, roads must fall movement moments. I mean, at, right at the beginning, we all made our interventions and there, were, there is some sense that at least in the white institutions, we can certainly say, given the activity that has happened prior to the moment of roads must fall, the uh, individuals which uh, did become uh, active, you know, uh, if you like, framers of the discourse of, of Rose Must Fall certainly had some kind of access to the, to the text. Blacks can't be racist. There's a, there was also in our conversation some kind of, um, um, you know, insights again about, well, there's, there is coincidences. In, in, the, in the thought process, which could just be because people belong to certain ideological trajectories, which lend themselves more readily to uh, raising the same questions that the, the, the text actually have raised. I have, and I insist that at least two moments in the text suggest that there was, the communality was much more closer than has been uh, recognized up to now. The, the, the fact that the text itself, Blacks Can't Be Racist, raised the issue of roads, Cecil John Rhodes, very sharply, and also raises the colonial question very sharply as a point of colonialism. And we see the movement when it speaks back, it raises these issues also as issues of uh, its own identity and modality of engagement. We know now the movement is a historical moment. It is gone. I don't think that the, we can claim that the movement exists. It is as historical, in my view, as the 76 moment, but it was the most promising moment. And when it moves to fees, it moves to class, it moves to uh, bread and butter issues, it normalizes and it gets easily co-opted as currently the situation is. There are no big questions facing that movement. Part of it was, we must argue, its failure to become a movement in society instead of being a movement um, in the university. Uh, that critique, I think it must be carried through for lessons uh, for the future. So from my point of view and from listening, I think that we can say, yes, this text has made some contribution to the emergence of that movement, or at least in how that movement imagined itself and interpreted the race moment, and of course, the symbolic questions of oppression. So let's, every one of you comrades have one minute to provide a summation um, and concluding remarks. Let's start with uh, comrade Toban. Agassiz, Toban. Yeah, so a network can be, can be a problem. Yeah, and networks are bad. Okay, uh, in conclusion, uh, I think for me, I make the initial point that I can that I agree on the communalities and the parallels existing between the arguments raised the post-mass fall movement and the black race text. 
um, it's very difficult for me to not concede to the fact that those parallels are not coincidental, right? In I'm, I'm of the belief from looking from the outside, I'm of the belief that the comrades were having conversation with the, with either the text or the same text that the convers the, the text was 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 dealing with. But for me, the most important point is not to be nostalgic about the point about the movements of the past, right? I, I love the I love history. It it is nice, but for me, it was to raise uh, this point that one. I agree that the fall is mom the, the fist must fall moment. Though it was able to break from the university gates into the streets up to union buildings, but it was in uh, it's it, it rendered itself incapable of rounding up the masses of the people. As Koba was saying, that Kwame Ture teaches us that the role of the student is agitational and at the space of ideas and knowledge. In that agitation, I think the movement failed to capture the masses of our people for a real a revolutionary moment to emerge. Also, there's a comment that was made about why is it that the biggest gainers of the fallist moment are the economic freedom fighters? And I think for me, it is because those who claim revolution and claim proper ideological consistency were unable to catch the energy and the fire of young people who emerge after the fallist moment. And it is almost inevitable that those young people, majority of them find a home in the EFF because it has postured itself as the most radical of the movements of post-1994. The last point being, I, I, I hope that all comrades who claim to be fallist, who claim to be believing in the ideas of the fallist moment, will, read, will start to think about how did we go wrong with that idea of the flat structure a thing that we're doing of saying everyone is a leader. How do we, when we rethink movement and resistance after, how do we fix that mistake? Because for me, one of the mistakes was in that idea that everyone was a leader, it was a flesh structure, because I think comrades were afraid to take responsibility and, the, and accountability for themselves. Thank you. And I think if we are going to move forward post this, we will need to first start at that point. One, the flesh structure thing didn't work. Two, principled unity that knows that we are coming together on this particular point. The idea of FMF of we are coming together because all of us are students is not going to help us if we want to break from the university gates to, to, to union buildings and finally at least wage a revolution that is going to free our people. Israel, to come. Thank you. Comrade Goba? Yeah. Uh... Sure, I think uh, when knowledge, uh, the purpose of knowledge is to alleviate suffering and uh, human suffering. That is, you go to school not to do anything. Just like Sobukwe says, he says that if you're in Africa and you're at school, what you learn should be a reflection and material expression of the conditions of where you are. So in essence, uh, on the way forward, but just because, but just before I get, I think to the way forward, I just wanted to 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 chip in a, a moment in history as well, where in the process and the development of the resistance period, we also had, you know, creative movements like uh, Aboshek land, you know, accommodation is land, which uh, also are a product of the continuation of you know, arguing these, you know, colonial settings that, you know, still uh, 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 by and large uh, 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 are closed out to, you know, the native students as it were. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, given the fact that we are where we are right now uh, uh, as a country in a crisis, where we have a COVID crisis, uh, the implications equally in higher education, particularly for black students, uh, students who are, you know, living testimonies of racism, uh, both in the structural and the infrastructural 
and 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 the objective and and you know the objective the playing out of racism as it were we 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 we, we the way forward comrades because what is happening now most of the fire that was burning in 2015 2016 has culminated into something where most of our you know peers have gone on to parliament others have gone on maybe into the labor movement others have gone on there is a survival question that have sort of has arisen as well as a result of these politics because if you ask them in detail as well now uh, we have not yet gone any far the question which was then five years back is still the question which still exists five years later and from where we're standing and from where we see there's no clear resistance even to the current regime which does not seem to you know going seem like it's going to alter conditions to favor you know tivet college students to favor you know historically black institutions to, to favor students who are saying that you know uct vids Stellenbosch do not look like us, do not speak like us, mothers and fathers who are equally in these institutions. And equally, you know, a phenomenon of, of, of I mean, maybe something, maybe something I wanted to chip in as, 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 as I wrap up. Representation in, in the spaces of, you know, a, 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 you know the, 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 the epistemological setup as well, who takes out this process, the professoriate, the people who are professors, you know, I, there was this other time at Vitz World to be like thought the history the professor of history was taught by an italian man and 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 it then showed you because most of these institutions now when you get there most of the hired lectures intellectuals are either people who are not necessarily reflective of you know the conditions that you are going through as as as, as a people or a country or a native be it our brothers from further African countries or brothers from India, India or China, whatever the case might be. But there's also that question that in higher education, in part of that unresolved larger colonial question, larger, you know, neo-colonial question where, you know, still the mines are owned by private sector, still, you know, the banks are still in the hands of, just, there's, no, there's no free education and what have you. The way forward now, I think as a generation, we need to perhaps you know, rethink alternative means of organizing how they are doing maybe in, in, in Latin America. You, there's a rise of a social movement type of organization there where structures maybe are not necessarily as flat, they are coordinated, there's an agenda, but what is actually spoken uh, Comrade Goba is Comrade Goba is muted. Comrade Goba to the 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 now we must the fire that was then must continue now because the changes are not there in fact we're sitting at a 56 percent high youth unemployment things are getting worse and worse and worse and there's no risk there's less resistance as opposed to so yeah that's 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 my uh last uh i think so let's go to comrade uh, Mastole and then comrade uh, Azania will close. No, me comrades, um, you know, in, in, in Cape Town, I do believe that we were at least closer to bridging the, the gap between the university and the community, mm. to be honest, um, closer than any other comrades who can imagine, up until again all struggles came and, and, uh, and, and disrupted some of our spaces. I mean, we even had Kilombo, which was like a, a, a whole space that we, which we always organize and mobilize people outside of the, the, the university. And I think this is important for, for so many reasons that it's not that simple that we, there were no attempts to foreground the movement. Uh, towards uh, outside forces to what we call the live bias. And I think also it's not a coincidence that even the first mass fall moment happened, but it's, it's just unfortunate that Congress don't want to be honest that this, this was somewhere, somehow a coordinated effort, you know? Um, I mean, prior before the, the actual moment of the fees in fact, 
there was a coordinated march on the 6th of October on end outsourcing, um, which we saw for the first time we were able to organize ourselves across the university. UJ participated, Rhodes participated, VETS participated, we participated. And prior to that, there were subsequent meetings that we have had with about comrades from CPUT, UWC. Before even the big moment happened to say, we want to see a, a moment of fire happening in this country, precisely because we believe that as black people, we have had enough of the 994 moment. But unfortunately, it was a, an attempt went wrong. And I do think that while the movement might not be there, but the fullest spirit and the attitude um, is still alive and, and kicking at least to this generation. And I think without really sounding like we want to start a pressure group or an NGO, we must really try to think about common interests that can bind all of these different revolutionary so-called movements in occupied Azania to deal with the arrogance of white people and their capital. Um, and also to deal with our contradictions within black people, whether it's in Amazulu, Namakosa, or the black men and the black women, or Africanist or black consciousness people with the ANC. Um, we need a program that will sharpen those contradictions, but yet remind us of our common um, experience of conquest and our common interest of liberation. And I think we are not doing that. We, we do not have a leftist politics. And I think this is what maybe the RMF moment or the first mass war moment failed to do, is to create a leftist movement or moment that can also link our discourse to imperialist um, discourse. Not this reductionist class thing that people are talking about now, claiming that they are actual Marxist or black Marxist, while they have been silent on imperialism taking place in our country. And where we had a coup in our country, a, a, a sitting president was taken down because of money and capital, and they were nowhere to be found. Uh, but that, that, that's another debate to another day. So I'm thinking we must revisit the fact that fears must fall in itself was a, a deliberate attempt which um, organized itself on the moments which were happening on the country. Now there are other moments which are happening in the country. How do we? take that energy into thinking about a blog that will put black people's interests first outside before politics was many people are playing politics with black people's lives and today we want to use politics to end our misery so we use politics to end politics not to to make our lives rich out of politics and perhaps this is why many people they have benefited out of this decolonist project precisely because they participated in the project for their own means, not to end the actual project in itself. So I want to end it there to say, look, we have a chance. Now everyone is, is, is sitting, but they are not really thinking that the country has been looted in front of our eyes. Maybe we can use this frustration and anger towards a particular direction. Thank you, Mr. Comrade Um, Thank you. Um, thank you, Faust. Um, so once again, I had network issues, but um, I, I, I'm not going to reiterate um, the position that has been um, submitted by the forces. But um, I think um, even at first when I was trying to rethink the whole program and the title, the, the theme, of course, given to the debate on can Blacks be racist and whatsoever, I was thinking at the same time, Domana, Utenu Andile Angaske allocate or can you try to locate um the race question within FISMAS fall? Because for me, there are just many contradictions when it comes to FISMAS fall, you know. And there are so many aspirations missing us with the movement and how it could have turned out right. But at the same time, I'm very much um with that said in the same breath, I'm very much interested in Andile and currently because we are in this space, right? Um because we have probably plus about two, three hundred people who are watching us live, right? Um, because we come from a movement, um, and that movement within that those contradictions that were eminent in the movement, and I believe some of those that that contradiction on its own is one of the contradictions that um, led to the movement finding itself in the current position without having realized the black agenda 
okanye yonke la kumba ya ili kona paya, not only to be woke, but also to be conscious, right, of their being in the world as black bodies, right? So I'm interested in us having a conversation, a conversation that is going to speak to race and gender, a conversation that would not then be a conversation that is going to just be viewed as a conversation that sort of tries to to to, to silence the race question, the, the, the gender question within um, the national liberation or the black liberation politics. I'm also interested um, in specifically these black men who are then at the same time of them being black and at the front of, of a revolution, but also at the same time they are being put right? And with that being said, right, um, there are contestations even to these things that these people are, 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 are to this accusation that different contestations, right? Um, we then find ourselves again with a feminist block um, in South Africa, um, ourselves included in that, that um, does not speak to black women, right, who are currently being misad by white monopoly capital in South Africa. They do not write on that, but um, we, whenever these spaces then are, are raised, um, such spaces where there are black men who are leading, right, then these spaces tend to be contested because the question are not only the, 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 the existence of the black man, but also the role of the black man in the struggle. And in this case, Black men being a rapist, right? So, um, 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 also with that said, I was reading um, Killing Rage by Bell Hooks um, the other day, right? On the politics of feminism and, and the politics of race. Bell Hooks makes a beautiful point here. And I think it's a situation which we had found ourselves in as a movement of Christmas, but when it comes to the feminist discourse, okay, the, 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 yeah, the feminist discourse or the, 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 the sexist discourse in South Africa, only being led in the forefront being women in South Africa, right? Um, and this for me was an assertion that um, there's only one gender in South Africa and that gender is women, right? But of course, there are factors that inform it are the feminist um, 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 within Christmas. But also at the same time, it is not to negate, right? It are legend. But I want us to have this, 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 this conversation, Andy, because I'm interested in this conversation because post Christmas fall, we have questions on we have cases of, of people being rapists and being labeled rapists, right? And then in the midst of that, and I'm going to make a typical example with the latest case of Uzam, Uzam, no, no, Java, right? There's a case at the peak and then the woman disappears, right? And it also happens at times with this politics of calling out um, these men within the spaces to only just right instead of calling out a band and the politics of, of just calling out into as it is so um, i want us without and because it, it, it's something that has been on my mind and Ian, Ian Flupa, because there was a time okay still there is currently right now people are contesting this conversation right also what does it mean right for black feminists and ourselves as well when we have this conversation there's majority men and abafazi are right um um, um, also, what, what does it mean also at the same time, post must fall, the feminist discourse in South Africa, and where exactly we find ourselves. I'm also interested because I think that discourse as well, it must be a black perspective discourse. It must be a black gender discourse, right? Because right? and black men at the same time at the forefront of that. But there are other politics and other factors that have not been discussed, right? Um, how people have been using and their bodies as weapons, right? We're not willing to entertain that. It's not um, I'm spoken of. So for me, I'm interested in that conversation in moving forward. Um, 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 the, the question of, 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 of gender and, and the question of race, um, because we have been um, accused on countless occasions of not only being patriarchal queens, but also these women then who are um, in these spaces with this with these men, right? Without first even understanding the politics and the position of, 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 of these women, right? Um, so it's important for me that um, we have this conversation. Um, it's important that um, in us having this conversation, the politics of calling out um, 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 
we speak into. And I say this because I do hope that when we have the conversation on, on, on gender and, and race, we are probably going to come up with a solution as to how then do we address um, 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 the nature of, of, of the microaggressions or the misogynist nature or the patriarchal nature of, 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 of a black man, right? If we are saying therefore they are that, right? What is our understanding of, of patriarchy, you know, in this whole context? So I'm very much interested because also at the same time, us only having a conversation um, that is ideal politically based, it is the same thing that 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 we find ourselves in Nain, the Gala Kufis Makonia Preki movement, where there is a PCPA block, right? That is seen as this block that 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 does not want to engage, or rather the black is block that does not want to engage um, the feminist discourse, right? And then there is a feminist discourse that is not interested in 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 in, in the race politics, right? You know, those contradictions were not addressed, we did not speak into that. So I think yeah, that's for me, that's my two cents, because also um, I'm concerned about the aftermath of this conversation um, and um, where we are going to, to find ourselves and where exactly these forces themselves um, 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 find themselves. So I'm very much interested in that. I don't know um, when can that be, 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 be organized so that we discuss it. And also when we discuss um, the, this feminist, or this gender question, I think we should also just run away from what you've been running away, it, it, it discuss of your race, it discuss on Amati or Taka, and then it discuss your fem, it discuss your feminism, it discuss of your abafas. So how do we have a group as our plan or any even representation of of, 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 of all of us as, as black bodies in these um, different um, genders we find ourselves in? Yeah, I think that was my two cents and what I wanted to contribute as um, a conclusion. But of course, um, I still believe that the movement could have um, Grown, the movement could have um, 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 questioned or it could have had it, it gains as in Kulu, but the movement was just a reversal of, of, of gains um, and a whole lot of other things. But it was just a kumbaya of a movement in which today we are still trying to, to reflect and, and find ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Congress, for your contributions. And I think uh, Congress Azania's intervention there is very important. And I, and I mean, I must just say that we are going to have to come back to the last part of your, the, the suggestion coming from Comrade Azania, the discussion on how do we deal with internal contradictions, particularly of, you know, uh, the gender question, continuous patriarchal behavior. And we have to develop a kind of operationalization of how do we deal with these contradictions when they express themselves? And, I, and, and we're not doing well there. And as a result, we keep on collapsing movements. We keep on breaking relationships because the movement itself is not thinking through what does it mean when we are faced with accusations of comrades misbehaving or, 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 or transgressions, and then they become used uh, in, in these opportunistic ways in some ways, right? And they might, some of them be real, but the movement is totally incapable of dealing with the internal contradictions. This is a big problem. The essay, Blacks Can Be Racist, its main, uh, if you like, attempt is to create a practice of thought and action which resists cooptation by the enemy. And, and, and our race, uh, project, our feminist project, must all be able to resist cooptation by capital. Unfortunately, and, and, and of course by the ruling class. Unfortunately, in reality, that moment and that movement have found itself, in some ways, these actors absorbed into society in the same processes of power where we are managers of the system of oppression. But I hear Comrade Mastol and others saying, well, there's still a possibility to build a movement. And I think we must take from this particularly early moment of the movement, radical questioning, but also we need to develop capacity to uh, turn uh, bread and butter issues into demands that calibrate a revolutionary possibility. Today uh, in society, we see that COVID-19, all the money is going to white capital. Our people have been given 350 rand. How do we deal with this bread and butter issue of hunger? Our people are, being, are hungry right now and turn it into a demand 
that can help to organize a movement that questions deeply. We should not have a mutually exclusive uh, a move on these questions. I see we are all gone now. Bye-bye. Until another time, time is up. That's it.